Much like the rock and roll at the Woodstock Music Festival, the 1969 men's basketball team had an infectious, riveting energy that Florida State students did not want to miss. They liked our style. It was upbeat, it was aggressive, and everybody had a really good time. We were rocking and rolling. Our team, we were rugged. We were a rugged team. It's sort of like reckless abandon. You know, throw caution through the wind. And we went out there, we just, let's go. Headed under coach Hugh Durham, the Seminoles were a predominantly black basketball team playing in the deep south during a time of social turmoil. But they overcame their cultural differences and their opponents by embracing the power of teamwork. We knew we were pretty good. And I think the big game that proved that was when we beat Jacksonville here. The defeat of the Dolphins proved the Seminoles were a high caliber team as Jacksonville ended up playing in the national championship. And like most successful teams, it all began with defense. I think that our style of play was very important because, see, we're going to press you the whole game. If you're not in shape, you can't play with us. You know, we played a 1-2-1-1. A one, one, one. The 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court press is known as one of the most aggressive and exhausting defensive schemes in basketball. By forcing inbound balls to the corners and trapping them, the defense is able to prevent opponents from easily breaking the zone and executing offensive plays. It was the bedrock of our success. We had good scores and we, had, you know, we knew how to play on that end, but we pushed the pace. With four black players and Kentucky redhead Dave Cowens, the starting lineup acquired the nickname the Busted Flush. But no one can forget the impact the relief off the bench had on this Florida State team. You had a guy like Roland Garrett. He ended up playing in the pros. He didn't get the start. When Elsie came in the game, he created the type of synergy that we needed. Maybe the best outside shooter we had was Randy Cable, and he didn't get the start. John Burke, great defender, could probably defend anybody one through five. Despite having an 11-2 record headed into conference play, their momentum and speed could not outrun the heartbreaking news yet to come. As I remember it, before practice, Coach Durham would have us all sit in the bleachers and he would talk to us about whatever news needed to be talked about. And we're sitting in the bleachers and he comes in and that's when that news was delivered as a team, as a unit in the gymnasium. On January 9th, 1970, Florida State would be put on a team probation for an individual act, restricting them from competing for a national title. I just think it was like, you know, you in a room with a bunch of balloons and you start sticking pins in them. <laughs> and uh, everybody is uh, just basically, you know, held their heads down in disappointment. I was really hurt. I was angry. Yeah, yeah. Many players felt their punishment was unjust given the isolated nature of the infraction. So you've got the NCAA, you also have a committee on infractions, and uh, that group often puts penalties on the schools. And so it's not unusual to have one or two um, violations that maybe by a coach uh, committed or a couple of the student athletes and the entire team gets punished for it. It's still true today. While the whims of fate gave them reason to falter, they chose to flourish instead, because losing themselves and their morals would have been far worse than losing a game. As a group, what was pretty cool is that we just sort of, okay, this happened, let's move on. Nothing we can do about it. We're not gonna let that define us. You know, it didn't change the spirit that we had. Nobody wanted to quit on the other, on the other person. Nobody wanted to quit on the team. If they had it, they could have transferred, they could have transferred out or tried to leave and say they're not gonna play anymore. So I think that we were just that close as a team. I think we were that mature as a team. Their allegiance to Florida State was unwavering. And although they didn't get the chance to compete for a national title, they found relationships and reached accomplishments of even greater value, creating bonds that lasted a lifetime. Florida State is, is basically home. I came down here when I was a kid. I was 17 years old and uh, met my wife here. I grew up as a person because I stayed at Florida State. 
Had I went someplace else, maybe I wouldn't have grown up to be the man I, I became. The story of the busted flush shows that life is not a matter of holding good cards, and finding success in a poor hand is free will. I'm Alexandra Wenling for Seminole Sports Magazine.